Well, I wouldn't be quite as optimistic as that, saying there are no dark clouds. There certainly is still a, a good deal of uncertainty uh, surrounding investment in emerging markets. But I think we're at the stage now where the latest um, economic news coming out of the U.S. suggests that um, the um, footing is very much on a, on a growth path in terms of uh, future progress. And the risks that were associated with the Fed pulling back from its QE policy now seem to have rescinded somewhat and um, investors are far more focused as you say on the growth growth outlook than the prospect of uh, less stimulus now clearly that has implications for emerging economies and you reference the world bank report uh, in your opening comments and uh, they still put some risk attaching to the potential for pullback of capital flows from emerging economies, particularly those that are exposed through uh, their current account deficits and their need for short-term funding. So there are some risks out there. In terms of positioning, certainly uh, in the first half of the year, we're still favouring developed markets over emerging markets. And if you look at the flows over the last 10 weeks, most emerging markets have suffered outflows. There are some exceptions within that as um, investors start to differentiate perhaps between some of the larger emerging economies. But overall, first half of the year it's developed over emerging and then possibly starting to differentiate as we work our way through the year with some of those emerging economies as investors find their feet, if you like, or get a little bit more confident as they start to move money and look for value because the valuation differences are starting to be quite significant. Well, certainly. And um, India sort of got grouped together last year with a number of economies and markets in this region, in Asia, um, with uh, those that are suffering from a, capital, uh, a current account deficit. And as a result of fears of tapering, so-called tapering talk, money was pulled back and markets suffered, as we know, and currencies gave up ground. Where we stand today in terms of our positioning, we're actually more... Um, more progressive, more positive on India relative to some of those other economies that have been affected uh, by this negative outlook. So sentiment has improved. We're, if you like, overweight India relative to some of those other um, economies which are uh, susceptible to concerns with capital pulling back. And we see some, some positive news. We've seen um, certainly headline inflation, latest numbers, um, from the Indian economy suggests that the um, RBI has some room to sort of pause a little bit in its tightening measures, though overall with core inflation still picking up, we do expect to see um, in the uh, interest rates edge up as we work our way through the course of this year. So in the short term, probably some opportunities for some modest gains. Overall, we're seeing rates increase and certainly India relative to other uh, markets within Asia that have been caught out by this reversal in US policy, probably better positioned, but recognising um, that there are still some concerns with the, the rupee probably trading between a very narrow range. So the worst of the damage that's been done there is probably behind us now.